In March 2018, the Trump administration added seven Pakistani companies allegedly engaging in nuclear trade, to a list of foreign entities that could possibly pose a risk to national security and strategic interests of the U.S. Recently, U.S. slapped sanctions on two more Pakistani firms for nuclear, missile-related activities. We estimate that Pakistan now has a nuclear weapons stockpile of 140 to 150 warheads. This stockpile exceeds the projection made by the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency in 1999 that Pakistan would have 60 to 80 warheads by 2020. Country's stockpile could more realistically grow to 220 to 250 warheads by 2025, if the current trend continues. China's role in the sale of M-11 missiles to Pakistan, along with the blueprints of the U-235 nuclear implosion device had been documented earlier. In the 1990s, many Chinese and North Korean vessels were raided to find and confiscate tons of ammonium perchlorate bound for Superco. Their Wanshan Special Vehicles factory has been providing its WS-51200 vehicles for the Shaheen-3 missiles to be made more mobile. More recently, China has provided powerful and high-performance tracking system for Pakistan's missile development program. Pakistan has a well-established and diverse fissile material production complex that is expanding. It includes the Kohuta uranium enrichment plant east of Islamabad, which appears to be growing with the addition of what could be another enrichment plant, as well as the enrichment plant at Gadil to the north of Islamabad. Four heavy water plutonium production reactors have been completed at Kushab complex some 33 kilometers south of Kushab in Punjab province. The new lab's reprocessing plant at Nalor, east of Islamabad, which reprocesses spent fuel and extracts plutonium, has been expanded. Meanwhile, a second reprocessing plant located at Chashma in the northwestern part of Punjab province may have been completed. Nuclear-capable missiles and their mobile launchers are developed and produced at the National Defense Complex in the Kalachitadawa mountain range west of Islamabad. Little is publicly known all about warhead production, but experts have suspected for many years that the Pakistan Ordnance Factories in Iowar, northwest of Islamabad, serve a role. As of the end of 2016, the International Panel on Fissile Materials estimated that Pakistan had an inventory of approximately 3,400 kilograms of weapon-grade, 90% enriched, highly enriched uranium (HEU), and about 280 kilograms of weapon-grade plutonium. This material is theoretically enough to produce between 236-283 warheads. The amount of fissile material in warheads can be reduced, and their yield increased, by using tritium to boost the fission process. A German company allegedly provided Pakistan with a small amount of tritium and some tritium processing technology in the late 1980s and China allegedly shipped some tritium directly to Pakistan. Thomas Reed and Denny Stillman conclude in the Nuclear Express that the tests included two designs, the first of which was an head device that used boosting. The second test involved a plutonium device. If Pakistan has produced tritium and uses it in second-generation single-stage boosted warhead designs, then the 3,400 kg hay and 280 kg weapon-grade plutonium would potentially allow it to build between 339-353 warheads, assuming that each weapon used either 12 kg of hay or 4 to 5 kg of plutonium. But Pakistan simply lacks enough nuclear-capable launchers to accommodate 200 to 350 warheads. Furthermore, all of Pakistan's launchers are thought to be dual-capable, which means that some of them, especially the shorter-range systems, presumably are assigned to non-nuclear missions as well. We can estimate that Pakistan currently is producing sufficient fissile material to build 14 to 27 new warheads per year although the actual warhead increase in the stockpile is probably around 10 warheads per year. Pakistan is amassing nuclear weapons and building new storage facilities deep in the mountains to protect them from India's first strike, different from first use. According to the print, new facility in Punjab province consists of three tunnels, interconnected under the mountain with each other, can store 1224 nuclear weapons. The facility in Baluchistan, two of these at Kusta and Kori and latest third facility is in Kenji, can store 3060 Shaheen-3 missiles.
Pakistan is paranoid that Indian armed forces will know exactly where its missiles and weapons are located. Pakistan has assembled at least 10 special trucks for transporting possibly weapons and missiles from KRL in Kohutu and the National Defense Complex, Fatehyang, to various locations, especially to Wanda, near Karachi. The Pakistani Road Mobile Ballistic Missile Force possibly includes eight or nine missile garrisons, including four or five along the Indian border for short-range systems, Babur, Ghaznavi, Shaheen-1, Nazr, and three or four other garrisons further inland for medium-range systems, Shaheen-2 and Ghori. Nazr, Hatf-9, a short-range, solid-fuel missile originally with a range of only 60 km that has recently been extended to 70 km. The four-axle, road mobile tell appears to use a snap-on system that can carry two or more launch tube boxes. The system has been tested in the past using a road mobile quadruple box launcher. The U.S. intelligence community has listed the NASR as a deployed system since 2013 and with a total of 13 tests reported so far. The weapon system appears to be well developed. Potential deployment locations include Gujranwala, Okara, and Panoakil. A 2017 U.S. intelligence community report states that there are fewer than 50 Shaheen 2 launchers deployed. After the November 2014 test, the Pakistani government reported the range as only 1,500 kilometers, but the U.S. National Air and Space Intelligence Center, NASIC, continues to set the Shaheen 2S range at 2,000 km. The Shaheen 2 is carried on a six-axle, road mobile telephone Pakistan conducted two test launches of the medium-range Shaheen 3 in 2015. The Shaheen 3 is carried on an eight-axle tell supplied by China, will still require several more test launches before it becomes operational. According to General Kid Y, the range of 2,750 kilometers was determined by a need to be able to target the Nicobar and Andaman Islands in the eastern part of the Indian Ocean that are developed as strategic bases where India might think of putting its weapons. But for a 2,750 kilometers range Shaheen 3 to reach the A and N Islands, it would need to be launched from positions in the very eastern parts of Pakistan, close to the Indian border. If deployed in the western parts of Balakistan province, the range of the Shaheen 3 would for the first time bring Israel within range of Pakistani nuclear missiles. A Babel, three-stage solid-fuel, nuclear-capable missile, which is currently under development appears to be derived from the Shaheen 3 airframe and solid-fuel motor and has a range of 2,200 km. The NOTAMs issued by Pakistan for the 28 January 2018 launch cover a distance of 2,900 km into the Arabian Sea. MRV technology of the Ababil missile reportedly uses the Chinese Synthiodolite tracking system to track multiple targets to develop a perfect multiple re-entry for its weapons. Development of multiple warhead capability appears to be intended as a countermeasure against India's ballistic missile defense system. The Babur and Rad are both much slimmer than Pakistan's ballistic missiles, suggesting some success with warhead miniaturization based on plutonium instead of uranium. The original Babur has been test launched 11 times, last in 2014, and is probably operational with the armed forces. Its road mobile launcher appears to be a unique five axle tell with a three tube box launcher. At different times, the Pakistani government has reported the range to be 600 km and 700 km, but the US intelligence community sets the range much lower, at 350 km. Pakistan is developing an enhanced version of the Babur known as the Babur 2 or Babur 1 BGLCM. The weapon has been test launched twice, on 14 December 2016, and 14 April 2018. Babur tells have been fitting out at the National Defense Complex for several years and have recently been seen at the Accra garrison northeast of Karachi. The garrison includes a large enclosure with six garages that have room for 12 tells and a unique underground facility that is probably used to store the missiles. The Babur 3 is said to be a sea-based variant of the Babur 2 GLCM, and to have a range of 450 km. The Babur 3 will most likely be deployed on the diesel-electric Agosta-class submarines. The air-launched, dual-capable RAD, HATF-8, 
has been test launched six times, most recently in February 2016, and might be entering service soon. The test launches have been conducted from a Mirage 3 fighter bomber. During a military parade in 2017, Pakistan displayed what was said to be RAD 2 ALCM, apparently an enhanced version of the original RAD. The RAD 2 can reportedly reach targets at a distance of 550 kilometers. A potential deployment site for the RAD is Masroor Air Base outside Karachi, which is home to several Mirage 3 and or Mirage V squadrons. The Pakistani Air Force is adding aerial refueling capability to the Mirage, a capability that would greatly enhance a nuclear strike mission. A possible nuclear weapons storage site is located 5 km northwest of the base, and since 2004, unique underground facilities have been constructed at Mass Raw that could potentially be designed to support a nuclear strike mission. This includes a possible alert hangar with underground weapons handling capability. The other Mirage base is Rafiki Air Base near Shawkot. The F-16A Bs are based with the 38th Wing at Mushaf Air Base, 160 km northwest of Lahore. Nuclear bombs are probably not stored at the base itself but could potentially be kept at the Sagada Weapons Storage Complex 10 km to the south. The newest F-16C-Ds are based with the 39th Wing at Shahbaz Air Base outside Jakobabad. There are also rumors that Pakistan intends to make the Chinese-supplied FC-1J F-17 fighter nuclear-capable, a nuclear role could potentially involve the dual-capable RAD ALCM, although such plans are uncertain. In 1965, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, the country's foreign minister at the time, had said, We will eat grass and leaves, even go hungry, but we will get one of our own, nuclear bomb.